What is up guys, McIntyre here. Today I wanted to bring you guys a guide video for Ariel. I think that currently she's one of the best supports in the game, so I wanted to make a video about her. Uh, I obviously I will talk about the pros and cons of her, kind of a composition that you would like to play her in, and then talk about the build for her, and then provide a gameplay. Um, so just going over Ariel's pros and cons. Uh, her first pro is actually going to be that she has some of the best AoE burst heals in the game. And by this I mean, you know, with Rhaegar for example, when you throw your Q, the first target gets the most heal, and then two other targets get a, a minor heal, right? Imagine Ray of Heaven being an Uther Q, but AoE, right? So it's possible to Uther Q heal four people or five people even. And that's kind of one of the most insane parts about her is that her AoE healing is really good. And for that reason, like melee heroes tend to pair well with her because they go in together. And when she heals them, they all get healed together, right? So this is the, I guess, first pro of Ariel is that her burst AoE healing and just burst healing in general is very powerful. Uh, the next reason that we'll take Ariel is because she has a stun. Detainment Strike actually is great follow-up on any sort of stun tank in the game, right? In particular, ETC comes to mind. Uh, just being able to, once ETC slides, whip the person into the wall and they get another CC. I mean, we're talking about a 1.25 second stun. It's longer than most all stuns in the game, especially on a basic ability. Uh, it also does a fair amount of damage if you talent it with the level 4 talent. And like it leads to more follow-up and more damage obviously because you can then land your sacred sweep you know if you've talented for damage at level one you can ray of heaven for more damage so i find that this to be one of the strongest parts about this hero and it's really you know what leads her to having a very good early game and leads into a pretty powerful late game the next thing is going to be crystal agus so this is a I guess you could call it like a D shield that stasis is the your your teammate. But what I really like about it is that it kind of shuts the other team off from hitting a certain target. But then when the target explodes, you turn the fight around, right? So if you Aegis them when they're going to one shot one of your teammates, and they've now clumped around that teammate, if you get a good you know blow up from the Aegis and then follow it up with a good ray of like a full energy ray of heaven then you're probably going to keep that person alive and then you can turn the fight from there, right? This is one of the best parts about her is this kind of ability to shut down the other team's burst and then turn it. It's unlike D-Shield with Uther. Sometimes, you know, you D-Shield your, pers your person on your team and they run away and it's like, oh, well, we didn't really get anything done. With this, it's like you Aegis the person. The other team stacks to try to kill the person and if you get a good heal on them at the tail end of that then you turn the fight completely so i really like agus about her a lot um the last one is going to be just like brightwing ariel has no mana so you never have to back to get mana right which is a big deal like not backing to get mana means that you can forever stay in lanes you can always push you can always you never have to back most of the time people back because they need mana, you know, and in some heroes cases they can back and, you know, global back in or something like that. But Ariel never has to do this because A, she has built in sustain through Ray of Heaven and she has no mana. So this is a really big deal when it comes to supports because in these long fights, these fights that go long, mana becomes an issue eventually and for her, it never does. So as long as your team's fighting and dealing damage and you have your hat on somebody that is dealing damage, you'll forever sustain the team fight. So this is a big part of her pros and the reason why we would want to choose her. So going over some cons now, the first is going to be that she has no poke heals. What this means is that if your team isn't fighting, you can't heal because obviously in order to use Ray of Heaven, you have to generate energy. And if your team's not generating energy, then you're not healing anyone. So this is a big problem with uh, Ariel. If like the other team takes like Asmodan or something like that, a, a Li Ming and or Lunara, and they start throwing stuff at your team, you're gonna have a hard time healing that if your team's not hitting them back. 
So this is one of her biggest weaknesses, which is why she pairs well with like melee assassins or people that want to go in because she is very good at going in and fighting. Not so good at just throwing stuff at the enemy team and waiting for something to happen. The next is going to be no cleanse. So although we do have Crystal Aegis at 10, we do not get cleanse at 7 and we have no talents that cleanse throughout the kit of Ariel. So if the enemy team is like one shot comp, your only counterplay is to Aegis the target when they try to one shot. And then after you've Aegis, that's it. There's no cleanse. Your pre 10 is pr pr sometimes weak if the other team is doing that. But what you have going for you is that if they go on your target, you have full energy. You heal that person that they're going on, and then you get your full energy again, and then reheal that person. Most of the time, you'll be able to sustain them through the one shot just because your heals are so powerful. So, you do have that going for yourself. Um, which most supports don't really have like the ability to be like oh yeah i'm just gonna out damage and out heal my you know opponent even though they're trying to one shot one of my heroes so it's so another reason why we see like ariel double support so that you do get the cleanse but that's a, another story so the last con is going to be that she requires aggression which kind of goes back to the no poke kills but if your team is not doing anything you are not doing anything on Ariel. And it's one of the most frustrating parts about the hero is that if you're not getting anything done, then you're just sitting there like, I can't heal. I can't, you know, I can't play up. I can't do anything because you can't. You really can't. The hero requires your team to do something in order for you to do something. So she's really good paired with a duo. If you're duo Q in Hero League or something, she's good. If you can hat your teammate, whoever your partner is, um, you know, you really have to make sure that there's going to be someone on your team dealing damage if you want to succeed with Ariel. Um, but we'll talk about, like, talking about heroes that are good with her. Things like Lunara that have good poke. All of her AoE generates energy. Vala is really good with her multi-shot and her Q and her auto attacks. Um, Thrall, I find, has been really good with his chain lightning and, like, one sunder and you have full energy. Uh, he also doesn't really require cleanse, right? A lot of these heroes don't require cleanse, and that's an important thing. Whereas like someone like Tychus might not be as good because he's got very strong single target, but not so good AoE, right? We want people that hit a lot of different things because then we generate more energy and we we can heal more, right? He's even she's even good on like heroes like Arthas and stuff because when they go in, they're just hitting everybody, to Hake even so like a dream composition for her and you see this a lot in tournament is like ario lunara uh an etc some sort of melee assassin thrall alarak and then anything we could just have a flex spot there that could be a double support that could be another range that could be another tank it doesn't even matter at that point you have a really good composition so that's where we want to see ario so now we'll go over the build and try mode all right so looking at our level one talent there are basically two choices here maybe even three um if you don't have a teammate that you're going to be healing offensively then you don't want to take searing light but this is like my default talent i really like you know being able to heal my teammate who's taking damage and damage the enemy at the same time sometimes you can even snipe kills like someone's almost going to get away and then you searing light them and you kill them i really like this talent i think it's aggressive and i think it fits my play style and a lot of the Ario players play styles because it follows what she wants to be doing and that's being aggressive. Um, if you feel that the enemy team has a very strong auto attacker, then Swift Sweep is very strong. It's gonna increase the cast time or the cast speed of your Q. And then you pair that with Blinding Flash at 13. And what this will do is blind the target for three seconds. It makes it so much easier to hit. So like Illidans, Tychus's, things, Zarya's even, things like that. You should take this talent most of the time because then you can make sure you land your Q and blind them, which basically shuts off most of their damage. Um, if there's not neither of those cases, sometimes I'll take this increasing clarity just for more damage on Q. It's not always that I do this, but every once in a while I do. You mostly see me go Swift Sweep or Searing Light. Just for the sake of this video and probably my gameplay, I will probably be taking Searing Light. Um, at level four, this is honestly, basically always repeated offense for me this is going to increase your damage of your e by 200 after you stun 
six people. So literally, yeah, all you have to do is land six stunts. That's so easy to do. You can, you almost get this done in like the first five minutes of the game. So I really like this. Some people do the radius. This movement speed one is not bad either. Like when you stun, they're slowed, which is actually pretty good sometimes. So you see this every once in a while, but for the most part, again, we want to be aggressive. We want to find kills and this talent's going to allow us to do that. So we have two things here now. If I go the blind build, which is the sweep, swift sweep, I usually take energized cord. This is going to allow me to auto attack to generate or if my team has no energy generators, then I take energized cord. So if I have to generate my own energy, this is the talent you wanna be taking. But if you have really good energy generators like Lunara or Bola, bursting light is where you wanna be at. This is gonna decrease the cooldown of your W by two seconds. So now your W is on a two second cooldown. So if you can generate energy over and over and over, you can literally just cast your W, boom, 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 boom. And this is where you see Ariel really come to light is when she's getting to bursting light over and over and over to keep people alive while she has people generating energy. So um, the other two talents are okay. A lot of people are taking this in the beginning, but it's just not as good as these two. So again at 10, Crystal Aegis. And now we look at our 13 talents. If we are taking the blinding path, then we want to take blinding flash. If not, I like taking repelling strike. It's going to increase the distance that you knock people. This is not only going to help you hit people in the walls, but it's also going to push people further away from you. So let's say an ETC is coming after me. I can whip him pretty far, like you saw there. That totem goes pretty far. And this again helps you to hit people into walls. You have better odds of knocking them into the wall so it's just i think it just pairs really well with this hero and it does good things in both defensive and offensive ways uh so now the 16 talent this really depends on where you're at if you have an illidan or something a vola attack speed's great if you have a Li Ming or a Lunara, the ability power is awesome. And then you can also go Reservoir of Hope if you do have like the Lunara and the fights are going a bit longer. This does eventually come into play. I personally like these two, but there's a lot of support players out there that do take this talent. So there is merit to all of the talents. This will increase your energy, obviously increase the burst at your level one for damage, increase your burst healing. There's a lot of good things going on here. Um, so we'll probably just take whatever when we get into the game but that's a very flexible talent tier um and then now at 20 we almost always take shield of hope it is important with this talent to use this when your person is weak and then heal them right a lot of Ariels you see heal and then hit it right you don't want to do that um you literally want to w or you want to shield and then heal them because then you're going to get you know the shield the bigger shield because they're at low lower health before right the same goes for if you a get someone who's weak when they pop out shield then w okay because they're going to be weak obviously when you when you a get them they're going to get a bigger shield and then you're going to heal them okay so that's a huge huge no no and this is a storm shield like this is not castable you just hit one and it casts just like storm shield okay so that's another thing that a lot of people don't know but please for the love of god do not heal and then do this it's just bad it's a bad habit cut it out when you're playing this hero you lose so much healing like you want your teammate to die and then shield and then heal like it's good to do it that way because then you're going to really get an effective shield off on your teammate so but that is the build we're going to hop now into the gameplay and put a lot of these things to use so i'll see you guys then all right guys so we're hopping into a new game i have fortunately recorded a video before this where i had this illidan and vala play chogol and then neither of them had a single game on chogol so ended it up pretty badly and then of course they talk started talking crap and Hopefully they don't troll me this game, but I am going to take Searing Light. I think it's really good with the ETC. And the Zarya.
I'll get my hat on too, Vala. Remember too, like your Q generates a lot of energy on this hero, so. Zarya is actually doing a really good job of managing her energy. I should be alright. I'm gonna whip. Oh, it's trying to whip the Diablo. Oh, we might be able to kill this guy. No, the mouth heals. Actually, we're gonna get Diablo. Nice. Yeah, the aggression that you can, like, you can see how on Ariel, like, I can s step up on the enemies. Like, a lot of supports can't do that, but Ariel can't, because you actually have the ability to kill them. I'm actually going to keep the hat on Zarya. I think she's doing more damage than Vala is at the moment with all that energy. So now I'll switch back to Vala. As our, our as Zarya's energy depletes, right? She's gonna get this way pushed, and a lot of the time too with Zarya, I mean with uh, Ariel, you want to like kind of hold energy, and then you can walk into a team fight, and then you have that first heal that's basically a full heal, right? So you kind of want to bank energy sometimes when you play her. Just so that when you show up to a team fight, you immediately have full energy. I'm gonna try to grab it here. I should be able to. He's he's gonna look to Q me. Yeah, there we go. Good job. I can whip this. Oh, he W'd it. Okay, we still got him. Again, that burning light level one. Look right here. Boom. Or searing light, not burning light. But that's that's just goes to show you like the talent does pay out like I get I can't tell you how many kills I actually get using this talent. As you saw there, we ended up getting two. I even want to like when we're pushing, I want to heal Zarya while I damage, right? I'm just gonna drop my nuke here. This way it hits all three. Sometimes too, you can get like, I, I healed both me, Zarya, and damage Gul'dan, like sometimes you can get that type of stuff off too. The key is that I'm not greedy about my heals and I make sure that I heal me and Zarya every time I heal. Zarya Ariel is another really good pair because she protects me just as much as I protect her. I'll probably invade their camp. Hmm, maybe not. See the Gul'dan? I'm gonna get the eye for sure. But you can see here, like, Zarya is playing aggressive, and because of it, I'm getting a lot of value. Look at my energy right now, right? Oh, Grizzlelacus. Look for the whip here on Murden if he steps up. Again, I don't have my energy banked, right? So. If they try to go on her, I can just immediately heal her up. Like this, and then not, I get another. I, 
have the ability to Aegis if I need to. And we have that decreased cooldown at 7, which has given us a lot of value as well. I'll put it on Illidan now. I think Illidan does a really good job of generating energy. And then maybe with Illidan on the point, right, I want to switch it back to Zarya because she'll be doing damage. I'll switch it back to Illidan. And this is where, like I was saying, like, poke hurts this hero. So, like, I got poked here by Gul'dan, and I have no way to kind of get energy to heal that back. Um, I want to bank energy again, though. So I might be able to get, like, a two-man heal or something like that. Oh, I think I ate a full Ming Magic Missile. I did. Dang. That was my bad. I even had Aegis up still. That was a, that was a tunnel vision by me. Oh, gosh. Like, I saw the Diablo whip, but I wasn't paying much attention to my own health bar. Oh, try ATC. So, I'm actually going to take the knock further. Like it was going over. This will allow me to knock the Diablo and the Merdin further away. Which is going to help out a lot. Yeah, I saw the Aegis up even. That was bad. This ETC is wild. I might, I should be able to save him though. With a good Aegis. Once I get there. I'm just going to instant Aegis him. This is going to hopefully generate some energy. And I can knock Merdin away. There you go. The three man heal. Now, as long as uh, Vol is dealing damage, oh, we should be generating energy. Just keep everyone really healthy. I'm gonna look for a dismount here. Should get a whip, maybe? Gonna be close. There it is. That's what we're talking about. All that AOE damage generates so much energy. And it's important to like, you cast your heal before you ult, because sometimes you get max energy off of your ult, and if you don't use that energy that you've saved up before that, then like, Sometimes you you'll you know miss a lot of healing. So in this case, I think attack speed's really good because I have the Illidan and Evolver. So I actually like synergize really well with both of those heroes. And even like if I give the hat to Zarya, then I think it's worth because she does technically auto attack.
We get on a mount. We're gonna like to waste so much time going after that guy. I'm just gonna push. And again, I want to like bank, bank some energy here. I don't really need to top, top anyone off. Like, oh, this guy's insane. Oh, I missed. I might be in trouble for this. There we go. Back to full energy. Just keep everyone topped off. Good expulsion zone. I'm gonna Aegis. Wall looks like she's doing a lot of damage. That's gonna be it, I think. Switch it back to Zarya. Boom. That's gonna be it. We did not get to level 20 Storm Shield, but I think a lot of the things that we saw um, are very typical Ariel game gameplay. Um, you want to make sure that you AoE heal as many people as possible, and then when you have the level one talent, you can use it you know aggressively to snipe kills. Uh, you normally like to heal the person that is on your team. Oh man, even a five page MVP. You normally want to heal the person that you want to stay alive plus the enemy that way you're dealing damage um, and don't be greedy with your heals like walk towards your teammate if he's taking damage so you can heal yourself and your teammate right or try to aim it so it heals someone else and a teammate right a lot of the times grouping and healing is really powerful you saw in the one fight was a 2v4 with me and Zarya because we were so clumped and the enemy was fighting us on our AoE we could just generate so much energy and all that energy that I was using to heal us was damaging them. And with the decreased cooldown on Ray of Heaven with Bursting Light, I got like three or four heals off that fight and it was just huge uh, amounts of healing. So a lot of humongous healing there. Uh, but this is the build that I decided to go this game. It's pretty standard. Uh, this 16 talent changes. That's the only one that really changes a lot of the time for me. But this is my favorite build to go. And if we look at our stats, we did 51. Did double the healing of the Malfurion. Jeez. But we had a really good Zarya. So this is actually a really good composition for Ariel. But that's going to be it for today, guys. Thank you so much. If you did enjoy, make sure to throw a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can always check me out on Twitch and Twitter, which will both be located below. If you guys have any further questions about Ariel, make sure to drop uh, them in the comment section below. I'll try my best to answer them. Uh, but that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you all next video.